rendition. So, oh, what a wonderful world, um, or is it? Um, I want to start by asking you uh, a, a couple of questions, um, and just think about the answers to these questions in your mind, and then I'll ask you about the uh, answers. So, the first question is this. By what percentage do you believe the world's forest cover is falling um, each year? Just um, have a little think about that, put the answer in the back of your mind, and I'll come back to it uh, in a second. The second question is, do you believe that income inequality in the world is increasing, staying about the same, or decreasing? So is the world getting more unequal, staying about the same, or becoming less uh, unequal? So let's um, take the first question first. Who um, thought, or who thinks that the world's forest cover is decreasing by 1% or more per year? Can you raise your hands? Okay, nearly everybody. Um, who thinks that um, the world is becoming more equal? So inequality is decreasing. Okay, so that's three people. Well, that's quite interesting because if you ask a random sample of the British population those sorts of questions, you get very um, similar responses. And the correct answer to the um, first question is that the world's forest cover is falling by 0.08% per year. And in the vast majority of the world's countries, forest cover is actually increasing. The correct answer to the second question is that the world is becoming more equal and has been becoming more equal for the last 20 years. And this is the first sustained period in the last two centuries during which the world has, be be has been becoming the pessimistic view. The general view of the world um, is that it's going to hell in a handcart, and by a pretty large majority, that, that view is held by a pretty large majority of people. So, for example, 94% of British people in a recent uh, opinion poll underestimated the proportion of girls finishing school in low income countries. 91% of um, British people in a recent opinion poll suggested or believed that the proportion of people living in absolute poverty in the world has increased or remained the same in the last um, three decades. When in fact, the proportion of people living in absolute poverty has not only decreased, but has decreased by more than that proportion has decreased by in the whole of the rest of the economic history of the world put together. In other words, decreased in the last 30 years by more than in the previous 6,000 years. Not only that, graduates' answers to these questions are actually further away from reality than the answers um, of the population as a whole. That might mean, because there are more graduates amongst young people, that young people are more pessimistic um, than old people. I, I, I don't know. Now, um, why is this, and does it matter? I would like to suggest that it does matter, and would like to suggest that there are perhaps three reasons why people are so pessimistic. The first is that the news we hear is overwhelmingly bad news. Normality and good news is just really not very interesting. Today my train arrived on time like it does 49 days out of 50. That's really not very newsworthy. But on the one day out of 50 when there's something like a trackside fire at Clapham Junction bringing the whole of the southeast to a halt, that of course is newsworthy. It's not very newsworthy that more people will eat lunch today than have done in any time in the world's history. But of course it is newsworthy, and um, deservedly so, that there are still people who don't get a square meal every day. The second reason probably comes from academia. Academics get rewarded, both financially and in terms of prestige, for identifying problems, which is a good thing, um, but also perhaps from exaggerating problems, which is not necessarily a good thing, in order to attract um, funds. So academics have perhaps something to um, answer for here as well. The third reason is um, due to what uh, Professor Steven Pinker described as the psychology of moralization. This is the tendency of academics, intellectuals, journalists, people in civil society, and religious leaders and politicians to want to focus on the problems of the world and exaggerate those problems because it makes them look more morally engaged. Whereas if you say, ah oh, well, things are not actually too bad, then you look apathetic and you don't look like, look, um, look like uh, such a, a nice person as the person who is saying that uh, you know, there are these problems in the world and we need to find um, solutions. But does it matter? 
Well, I think it does. If we don't understand um, the facts, then we'll create a distorted discourse about policy in the public square, and as a result of that, we'll get bad policy. If the pursuit of, the, of a set of policies, say, over the last 30 years, is assumed to have produced outcomes diametrically opposite to the actual outcomes, then um, in the future, we might choose the wrong set of policies and make things worse. And we can relate this to what theologians call, and, and philosophers, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas there, obviously, at the bottom, um, call um, virtue ethics. And the virtue of prudence is defined as that virtue um, that disposes practical reason to discern our true good in every circumstance and to choose the right means of achieving it. In other words, before taking action, we should consider things carefully. We should look before we leap. And if we do so, as a result of that, we will take better decisions. That's true in our personal lives, and it's true also when it comes to things like public policy. It's also, by the way, true when it comes to managing organisations such as universities and businesses. So, we've managed to stretch from um, uh, geography and the environment through politics and economics to philosophy and um, theology in um, seven minutes. But let me just go back to the beginning and say that whether you're an A-level student looking for essay material um, or a civil society activist or a, a teacher um, or um, just a generally interested uh, member of the public, one great place to go to find out the facts about the world is um, Professor Max Rosa's website. He's a University of Oxford professor, which is called Our World in Data. There's a fantastic array of facts and commentary on those facts about how our world has changed over the last um, two or three centuries, which is a fantastic resource for all students, teachers, and any interested members of the public. Thanks.